All right, guys. So I was thinking the other day, and I was actually talking to a good buddy of mine that's also a professional fisherman, that kind of the difference in trends and kind of where stuff goes, me and him were kind of talking about what's next, like what's going to be the edge in a couple years of like how you're going to do something different than everybody else. Because when you're, when you're fishing, you know, tournaments where a lot of people are very competitive, it's extremely difficult to do something better than those guys. You know, like all the guys on the Bass Pro Tour, those 80 guys are extremely good. They're very, very good at, at finding them fast and catching them on every kind of technique. And then on the Elite Series, obviously, we have 90 guys that are extremely good, very, very difficult to consistently beat. So there's always got to be something that you're kind of ahead of the curve on if you're going to consistently have good tournament finishes. And one of the things that we ended up talking about is it's hard to pick how it's going to go, but it obviously looks like electronics are becoming more and more powerful and more and more dominant in all these tournaments. And it kind of reflects back to like 10 years ago, whenever like side imaging was, a lot of people didn't even really understand how to use side imaging. It had yeah, it came out before that, but that's really what was the main thing that everybody was using then was side imaging because you could see out beside the boat 100, 120 feet very, very easily and see stuff that would normally take you hours and hours to graph. Now you can graph it in just a matter of minutes because it has such a wide span. And then obviously now we have live scope. We can see the fish sw swimming around live in front of us. Not me today because I'm on my aluminum boat, you know, so I don't have any kind of graph on here at all, but definitely the trend for the past 10 years has been more and more powerful electronics. You're seeing the absence of your Denny Browers that used to dominate, you know, Tommy Biffles that used to just like do super good in these tournaments and they would just, they're really specialist type fishermen that everywhere they went, they found the type of bite that caught big ones and they were really, really good at. Well, now you really have to be extremely versatile and you almost have to mix in three or four different things every single tournament to have a good finish. Like whenever we go to smallmouth places, a lot of times it's dominated in one way Whenever you fish for largemouth on a lot of these southern fisheries, you really have to have two or three different things going if the fish are not spawning. So you have to be extremely versatile now. So you're not seeing as many specialist type fishermen come in to you know, the professional scene unless they're a specialist in electronics. Those types of guys seem to do the best no matter where we go. They consistently catch them. They consistently do really, really well. So for the next few years, it seems like that's just gonna get more and more dialed in. There's gonna be better mapping, so you can pull up on places more efficiently. There's gonna be better electronics, all this forward-facing stuff, the 360s, you know, every brand now has really, really good forward-facing sonar. But what, what we're starting to see with that is, it's actually conditioning those fish to where they can feel that sonar beam. So if you get within 40 feet of them, 50 feet of them, a lot of times they start to act completely different than they do if you're at 80, 90, 100 feet away from them. So the, the power, of the forward face sonars, as we get to where these lithium batteries and these really high powered electronics can see out further and further, that's what's gonna be the biggest key going forward is gonna be seeing them at even longer distances and you know, just really understanding how they, re how they react to bait. But that's really a specialist type of deal all in its own. So it's the only specialist type of fisherman that still can kind of go through the ranks and make it to the top level. But in the past 10 years, it wasn't that long ago that we didn't have all this type of stuff. You know, even five years ago, you didn't see live scope on very many boats at all. Like it was very rare to see somebody using live scope and it wasn't, or Panoptics was, was the first one that came out. And you really didn't see it much dominate back then. But now it has literally went from a, 10 years ago, it was side imaging whenever it was May, June, Tennessee River, all that type of stuff whenever they're offshore, small mouth, finding rock piles, all that type of stuff. And then a lot of the other times of the year, it was still dominated relatively shallow. And now it's really starting to see more suspended fish being caught. So in the past 10 years, the biggest change that I've seen is we went from not being able to catch suspended fish almost at all to the A-Rig coming out. Paul Lice winning that tournament around 10 years ago on Gunnersville, catching suspended fish. And then after that, the forward face sonar coming out and now we can catch suspended fish. So all these fish that typically suspend and then go to the bank to spawn, to eat, to feed, to hunt, all that type of stuff, whenever the water gets muddy, they go to the bank. All those fish that are not on the bank all the time that suspend, now we're able to catch those where 10 years ago it was a lot more difficult. So that's the biggest change that I've seen in the past 10 years is just how much these electronics have evolved and made us be able to catch fish that you couldn't catch 10 years ago. Like these suspended fish have been the hardest fish to catch growing up. I remember hearing about it. They suspend and you just can't catch them. Well, now you can catch them, and that's the biggest difference. So let me know what y'all think below. What's a major trend that y'all have seen come and go in the past 10 years or how you think things have changed? And let me know your idea of what you think is going to happen in the next two, three, four, five years, where the trends are going to go because 
let me know so I can be ahead of the curve a little bit. We need all the help we can get out there. So I appreciate you guys watching. Wait, I have kind a of my take on it. So you know how Bass has to do things that are good for the people. Yep. Because they need the viewers. Yep. I have seen comments like I don't I don't want to just look at somebody fishing, looking at their garment the whole time. Yep. Do you think bass will take that away because their viewers don't like it? I that's a really, really good point. And that's one thing that I didn't really think about at first, but the quality of the content has definitely changed in the past 10 years. You know, 10 years ago, that was before Bass Track. Now this is just, this is not really about fishing. This is about, or not really about the catching of the fish, but about the excitement around the sport. 10 years ago, there wasn't really Bass Track. You didn't know who was really gonna win the tournament until way in. Now, on the MLF side, you know who's gonna win the tournament, you know, like throughout the day, somebody gets out to a 20 pound lead with half the day left, you're like, oh, well, he's gonna win the tournament. You know, whereas 10 years ago, you had to go to the weigh-in, you had to see him weigh the fish in before you actually knew who was gonna win. And that just created a lot more excitement, a lot more big memories and a lot more big moments. You know, the classic, they would always be close and they would come down to whenever, you know, whoever was the last to weigh in had a shot to win it every single time. And now that, that excitement is kind of lost. And then I agree with the TV shows and stuff. I'm gonna watch a TV show from, you know, just for fun, it's gonna be one from eight or 10 years ago where nobody's looking at their electronics. Because it's not that fun to see somebody just staring at their electronics and then just set the hook on a spin rod, fight a fish for three and a half minutes, lip it, you know, put it in live oil, whatever. That's not near as fun as how it used to be whenever they were, you know, Whopper Plopper first came out and they were catching these big fish just like blowing up on that thing on these shallow brim beds and stuff and big flipping bites and all that type of stuff. To me, that was just a lot more entertaining, a lot more fun to watch, but I like fishing shallow. So it's obviously, I'm gonna be a little bit more partial to that type of fishing. So, I mean, it definitely has changed, in my opinion, the quality of the content that is put into these TV shows, put into this live coverage. It's a lot more fun to watch guys fish, you know, by the seat of their pants, in my opinion. I don't like looking at them staring at the screen. I hear that from a lot of people. So let me know below also on that. Do you like seeing the people catch them in live scope? Do you like seeing those types of tournaments? or you like kind of the old school flipping, you know, spinner bait and all that type of stuff up shallow type of tournaments. I mean, that's that's a really good because point. I didn't at think least about. if you're watching somebody fish, you can kind of understand their technique and like yep. what they're doing. If you're watching somebody look at their screen, you don't know how their screen's set up. You don't even know what they're looking at. Right. Like it might even be better if they had a, a, a camera on their screen so at least you could see like the fish, cause that would be exciting. Yep. Like seeing it come to their bait and yep. biting it. That would be a really good key if the camera wouldn't get in the way during these tournaments, you know, but like that is true, like 100% true. You, whenever you see somebody go down the bank, you can see like, hey, he's about to skip under this dock. He's about to throw up this lay down. He's about flipping this grass. Whatever you see, whenever you see him just stay on the front deck of the boat in the middle of nothing, you really don't understand what he's exactly doing. You got a pretty decent idea that he's out there on something. Might be a point, might be a brush pile, whatever. He's definitely out there offshore looking at fish, but it just doesn't kind of give you the the mental notes and kind of the engagement that you get whenever somebody is working down a bank fishing shallow or something like that. So I definitely agree with that 100%. Okay, that's Anything fine. else? That's all. That's all from Miss Hunter's input in this tournament. I appreciate y'all watching. Leave me some comments down below talking about that stuff because I'm interested in where y'all think the trends are going to go and if y'all like those types of tournaments.